a man I walking can't. around like a dog. Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> Let's break these VFX down, guys. Yeah, there's a lot of visual effects going on here. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artist React. We got some great clips we're gonna be looking at today. A few that we've been wanting to talk about for a long time that we're finally addressing. You've been asking for them, and we're finally delivering. And there's a very special clip I have for you guys today. It's called The Call of the Wild. It's about a man and his dog and a lot of snow. I never saw this film, but on NPR I heard a review Everyone just kept saying, there's something up with that dog. And I'm like, huh. So I decided to look into it. This is Beck. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. You know, actually that dog doesn't look that bad. It's, see, that's the thing. That, that's it's a, pretty, a pretty good looking dog. That's a pretty good looking pup. Dude, look at all these dogs. These I are love all CG dogs. dogs. So before we even get into the dogs, everything in this movie is shot like on a blue screen stage. For, like, wait, really? Like all the backgrounds you're seeing and all that stuff, they're, they're all on a sound stage right now. Okay. I can okay. see it. it's, yeah. it's, pretty, it's pretty nuts how much I mean, CG is, is in this film. So that means like if the dogs are CG, the ground they're walking on is CG too because they're gonna be interacting with the snow a lot better if it was CG. The concept of CG snow is something that I've been like paying attention to over the like, it's about the last 10 years. Uh, it's something called granular fluid simulation. That's like sand almost. Yeah, basically, but it's like semi-fluid, but it clumps in a natural way. So you can see a ton of it in action here and it's, that's, it's that's subtle. That's 100% CG shot that right there. That is nuts, dude. Come on, Beck. You have to get on the date. Allez. I mean, the dogs look pretty freaking good. It's just too good. It's like, they look too good, almost. They're very expressive. I think that's the main thing. Right. I think, I think yeah. that's what it comes down to. It's like, from a, like a still frame, they look 100% real. Like, that looks so good. Yeah, like that right there looks like a National Geographic photo of a dog. Totally. But the moment they start moving, they're like magic pups, basically. Magic yeah. pups that are ultra intelligent and can express themselves in ways that are just impossible for normal animals. I find myself actually kind of liking that a lot. If this was Air Bud, you know, you just have a dog look back and be like, you get no emotive value out of real animals like that. But here, you can see the determination on his eyes. He's like, I'm ready to go. This all looks hand animated to me. Like, how else would you do this, you know? Oh, it, it most well, definitely probably is hand animated. In that case, Clint, what do you think the process is to capture this footage? Well, I mean, you would definitely shoot a number of plates, one without the dog, one with something or someone in the space of the dog to see how their shadows react to the environment. So you probably you bring a reference dog to set to constantly get shots of a real dog Wait. in that area. Well, uh, the producers had a, a very different take on this. Oh boy. This is our dog. All the plates of interaction were done with a, a man walking around like a dog. Dude. Wait, I recognize him. Yeah, he's the guy from the Planet of Apes. He's the Planet of the okay. Apes, Ape. Dude, I bet he was so sore. Oh my God, the amount of yoga you'd have to do to undo all of that all day long for months. I don't think they're actually taking any of the motion capture aspects to it. There's an animator who's watching the dude's performance and then making the dog animate in a similar fashion. They're not actually tracking anything and directly translating it to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> There's some more discretion is here. Uh, see, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Tell me though, is it harder to act like a dog in a motion capture suit? or harder for Harrison Ford to act like this man in front of you is a dog. I think it's easy enough to believe that you are a dog when you're in that situation. I think it's harder for a person like Harrison Ford to embrace the fact that this is not a person and it's a dog. I'll just tell you, like, if I do this, this is hard for me to imagine you're a dog. <laughs> this is like good no, dog. I can't good, do it. I can't do it. Good doggy. No. We're, well, we're going to replace him with a dog later. But I, <laughs> Harrison Ford's probably not thinking, I have to imagine he's a dog. He's probably just thinking like, the way I'm actually reacting to this guy in a mocap suit <laughs> is probably the same way I'd be reacting to a dog right now. A certain actor might do it a different way, but I think they all try to get to an end goal by a bunch of different means. And I think Harrison Ford is probably just like, what? I'm just a little strange. I'm rolling around on the floor with this guy and scratching his tummy. Because he had to, I guess, right? There's money involved. They're leaning into these animals having performances. 
So it makes sense to have a person inspiring those performances. I would make an argument that this is one of those films that they need to release an alternate cut of. <laughs> they should release the, the man cut of this one, where we see the actual motion capture actor performing the dog's actions. Look, the behind the scenes, seeing the dog man is a goof, but I think there's some really good execution still going on here. There are moments where it's like obviously not a real dog, but it doesn't detract from the experience of watching it. Oh, I think watching the full movie might change your mind, but... Maybe, maybe. Dude, yeah. you know what this reminds me of? is Hocus Pocus. The cat in Hocus Pocus. It's hollowed ground. Witches can't set foot here. He talks. I mean, like, it was a puppet, right? It, it was a CG mouth moving and stuff. I think it was yeah, a puppet no. mouth. I think I'm pretty sure it was CG. Couldn't have been a CG cat. This movie came out in the early wow. 90s. That's why it's so impressive. It came out before Jurassic Park. There's no way that was a CG cat. Pretty, We're gonna have to pull this up now. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. We're gonna have to pull sure. this up now. Because of me, my little sister's life was stolen. No, see, look at that. Real cat with a CG face. That's what that is. It's not a CG face. I'm pretty sure it's computer generated. Clint, I'm telling you, there's no possible way it was a CG cat. I'm gonna, God, give me my phone right now. Okay, Rhythm and Hughes, the visual effects and animation company that created CGI, went all out making his feline features realistic. Rhythm and Hughes. Do, 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 do. The, the performance of the mouth was matching the performance of the eyes, so I will give you that, Clint. Hey, if you guys are enjoying this video and are not subscribed, please consider subscribing, because we put one out every single week, and they're all really fun, I promise. What so, movie okay. is this? <laughs> so, all right, let me preface. What right. is this movie? Right. So this is The Mermaid, all right? This is directed by Stephen Chow. He's one of my all-time favorite oh. directors. I think it's really a really weird movie. It's got what? some funny jokes, some funny scenes, but it's weird, all right? Just brace yourself, it's weird. All right, this guy is trying to kill that main bad guy right oh, there. Oh, an assassin. That is, so the guy in the black jacket is a bad guy? Yes. What's wrong with his pants? Dude, Something's up. Okay. Oh, he's Squid Man. He's an octopus, by the way. Yeah. I can tell. And that, that's a, the bad guy's bodyguards. They're hunting down all these, like, fish people. So he's trying to play it cool, or else he's gonna, he's gonna die here. You're the chef, right? So cook the food. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> ah. oh, this is horrible. They're oh, cutting God. him up. They're cutting up his tentacles and cooking him alive. Oh, this is, oh, this is horrible. Oh my God. And they're just staring at him in agony. Oh my God. <laughs> this is so twisted. Look at this exit though. <laughs> <laughs> He's like. <laughs> just a practical like octopus ball man flying out the window. Like. Just the concept of the scene is so gross. Let's break these VFX down, guys. Yeah, there's a lot of visual effects going on yeah. here. Okay, those tentacles look pretty solid. But you could tell they're so CG. No, no, they are, the but they look good. The tentacles good. themselves weird, right? look fine. It's the comping into the real footage that is suffering a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, you can tell it's got fake shadows underneath him. Yeah. The contact shadows are a little kind of janky here. Yeah, it's weird. It's like I mean, not bad, but you can still tell that it's pretty obviously VFX. This reminds <laughs> me of some of the stuff that we've made because it's like, <laughs> The visual effects are good enough to convey a point. They're not like Hollywood grade, like grade A effects, but this is a non-serious scene. The dude's frying himself and he's giving the reactions like. Yeah, yeah. That octopus clip is really jacked up. And if you have any other jacked up visual effects clips that you would like to see us break down, let us know in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so 1917, a movie about World War I, but not just about the war, but about the people who fought in the war. It's, it's famously a single take movie. The entire movie was filmed in one shot. One Except, shot. Except, obviously that's impossible. You can't shoot this whole thing in one shot. So you gotta fake it with visual effects. So there, there are easy ways to mask transitions. If you have just something cross frame, that's a classic, really easy way to do it. And, th and that is in this movie all over the place. It's really easy to identify, but there's a few times where it's right in front of your face and you don't realize it. But let's say they shoot one take of these guys like crawling up and over a mound, but they have to cut to a different take where they're looking at kind of the same camera angle, but there's no way to wipe between them. Now you have to like somehow combine these two entirely different shots together in front of your eyes the whole time, like a card trick. Dude, this whole sequence crossing no man's land was, oh my God, man. With all, with all like the, the corpses sticking the out of the mud. Yeah. 
And that was it. That was it. That was a transition? Yeah. So they did a CG double. Oh, I see what you're saying. To morph between the two yeah. different shots. This is a scene where we have characters starting at point A at the end of one shot, and they begin at point B in the next shot. And in order to transition between them, they basically transition to a completely CG character to complete that movement from one location to the next, but it's invisible because they're so good. It's a lot of like projecting the, the ground and the crater onto some geometry and just kind of like morphing it into place so that ideally it looks exactly like the beginning of the next shot so they can just cut the CG stuff out and resume the real footage afterward. That, that's cool. I've never seen a CG transition like that. I'm sure that they've done this before, but like this type of use of it is really, it's, it's really advanced. It's definitely hard to do. And there's lots of scenes in this movie that are like that. See, like right there, that was, did you see it? Uh, okay. They cut to a digi double there as he dove in. Now we don't have behind the scenes footage of this, but I think we can tell. We're like, he goes and he goes through the actions of actually jumping and then they, they, they're done shooting for the day. They start up the next day with him jumping down into the crater. And now they have to morph those two shots together with just a photo reel digi double and they just match his, his posture perfectly, go through the motion to match the posture of him in the next moment. Those are the types of things you probably are not gonna notice when you're watching this film. It, it won the Oscar for best visual effects this year because you never notice any visual effects in this movie. They're everywhere and yet you never once think about the visual effects. World War One really jacked up. If you don't know a lot about World War I and you're, you're interested, Dan Carlin has an amazing World War I podcast called Blueprint for Armageddon. You, you, should, you should listen to it because it will give you a really, really good perspective on how the 20th century kind of kicked off. 1917 is a fantastic movie. If you haven't watched it, you better go do it. And also watch Hocus Pocus. It's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I had a blast, Ren had a blast, Sam had a good time too, you know? It's great that we can all get together and break down these VFX shots for you guys. So please keep watching, keep subscribing, keep commenting, send us your VFX shots. We love doing this. See you guys on the next one. Hey, that was pretty good. Hey, that is pretty good. That's pretty good. Hey, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. That was pretty good.